Hey, welcome back to the channel. I really, really appreciate you joining me here again. Today, I want to talk a bit about some of the information that I mentioned, or rather that I actually did not mention in the video where I spoke about how practical EVs are. I think I left out some very important details. Let's talk about it. The first thing that I want to make clear is that I was mainly referring to how practical owning an EV is from the perspective of charging the vehicle and the range needs. I was not referring to the different types of vehicles, including work-specific vehicles like pickup trucks, service vans, transportation of goods like the semis. I was specifically talking about family cars, mainly sedans and SUVs. In addition to that, all my comments are mostly in relation to the countries where Tesla provides sales and services. I am aware that there are many countries where EVs are not yet practical, but we are at a somewhat early stage of true EV adoption and these things take time. We're not at a point where all types of transportation needs are met with EVs, but we will get there very soon. I briefly mentioned in my last video how not everyone has the ability to charge their EV at home. And I also mentioned how the only truly reliable vehicle charging infrastructure is the Tesla's two supercharging network. But this is something that I hope changes as time goes by. Tesla is a great company, but their mission of moving us to a future where energy and transportation are sustainable does not require Tesla to be the only player in town. But let's talk about the things I want to discuss here, because while most of you understood the things I mentioned in my previous video, there were some negative comments that simply did not take into account what I intended to make clear that electric family cars can be as practical, if not more, than their gasoline or diesel counterparts. This is especially true if you mainly need a vehicle that is reliable, safe, and has enough range to cover your local city needs. But you see, the thing is that Tesla electric vehicles do these things and much more. Let's consider the United States. Here, owning any Tesla model like the S, the Model 3, the Model X or the Model Y is not only practical, but I honestly think that no other brand can touch them. But there are other acceptable options and you can pick the one you like best. It doesn't really need to be the best. It should be good enough to meet your needs and one that you like. But if you live in the United States, the better choice is clear. Tesla. Here's another thing that I hear a lot. And it was also commented in my previous video, EV fires. Anyone that truly think that EVs are more prone to fires is completely and utterly wrong. Electric cars are a lot less prone to fires. They don't have a tank full of flammable liquid. In fact, all the relevant United States agencies have clearly documented this. Let me give you an example. In 2020, in the United States, there were approximately 16,000 hybrid car fires. About 199,500 gasoline car fires and 52 fully electric vehicle fires. Yes, you heard that right, 52 total. Gasoline cars are many orders of magnitude more prone to catching fire. In terms of fire-related recalls, out of the numbers I just mentioned, the Hyundai Kona and the Chevy Bolt EV were the only EVs with reported fire-related recalls during 2020 in the United States. But you don't have to take my word for it. Feel free to visit the link in the description of this video for some additional details. And before I forget, it's also worth noting that many fires can also and commonly start with the 12 volt batteries that all cars have. Gasoline, hybrid, and full EVs use 12 volt batteries. EVs are not at higher risk. The battery pack of the Tesla is not a constant ticking time bomb. Teslas are among the safest vehicles in the world in that regard. Don't even get me started with safety while driving. There is no vehicle safer on the road than a Tesla. Between the safety features and Tesla's driver assist technology, no other car is even close. But that's a topic for another video. So let me make my main points clear. Number one, they say it takes too long to charge an EV. Um, no, it doesn't. The majority of the time you will charge it at home, at work, or while you're doing something else like shopping. Generally, you will not have to go to a special place to fill up because you plug in at home and in the morning your car will be ready at a fraction of the cost of gasoline or diesel. Yes, this is not possible for everyone, but that takes me to the next point. Point number two, there are not enough places to charge if I can't charge at home. 
that is just false, completely false. There are thousands of places where you can charge. You just need to know how to find those places, which is fairly easy. But if your EV is a Tesla, the Tesla supercharging network is your best option for hundreds of miles of range from zero in just a few minutes. Now, my third point, that EVs are expensive. This is a misleading statement. While buying a Tesla may be a bit more expensive than other cars, the savings in fuel, repairs, and maintenance alone will more than make up for the entry price in a short amount of time. Do an internet search for Tesla Model 3 versus Toyota Camry, and you will find many studies that prove Tesla Model 3 is cheaper to own than a Toyota Camry. Point number four, EVs pollute more than gasoline cars during manufacturing. This is absurd. This is just not true. But let's consider the following scenario. Let's say that a Tesla Model 3 was produced in a dirtier way than any gasoline car, which again, it doesn't, but let's just say at least it's the same. Driving an EV does not push carbon emissions. The power grid gets cleaner and cleaner every day. And if you have solar panels in your home, charging your EV will be free of net new emissions. Point number five, batteries will not last a long time and will be super expensive to replace. This is another falsehood. It's completely false. A 2020 study of Tesla vehicles showed that after 150,000 miles, most batteries have lost only about 8% of their capacity. At this rate, these batteries could retain about 80% capacity at 500,000 miles and potentially last well over 1 million miles. The average lifespan of a gasoline car is about 140,000 miles. So think about that. Fire hazard, my favorite, please. Due to a handful of highly publicized electric vehicle crashes that resulted in fires, some people believe that EVs are a fire hazard. However, every day there are countless vehicle fires from crashes involving gas cars. But few of those make the news since it's so common. The batteries used in EVs are the same type of battery, lithium ion, found in laptops and cell phones. While there is always a chance of any electronic device that could catch fire, how often do we worry about our laptops or mobile devices combusting on fire? On the other hand, you better bet that most people are careful when it comes to gasoline due to its highly flammable properties and the potential of a fire hazard. So that is just not true. And the final point, my seventh point, is the high electric bill. Paying for electricity, even where it's most expensive, is over 50% cheaper than paying for gasoline. If you charge a short range EV or a plug-in hybrid at home, you may not even notice the small increase to your electric bill. There is no comparison to the price of gasoline, even when gas prices are at record lows. According to the EPA, charging an EV only costs about $500 per year. You will save thousands of dollars if you choose an electric car instead of a gas powered model. I can talk about this for hours, but maybe we can continue another day. If you stayed this far, you're amazing. So this is what I'm going to do for you, or rather, this is what I'm going to do for one of you. If you are in the United States and you own a Tesla Model 3 or a Model Y, the first one of you that sends me a direct message on Twitter and tells me exactly, I watched your seven reasons to get an EV, I will send you a free gift. Well, that's all I have for today. I really appreciate your time here, so thank you for your visit. Please help me grow the channel by clicking the thumbs up if you like the video. And if you don't want to miss any of my videos, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel with the notifications on. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you join me on the next one. Hasta luego. Chao.